I want to tell the young people, don't trust anyone, don't help anyone out there. I learned my lesson. Hello everyone, today's story is on Maria Elvira Pinto Exposto. She was sentenced to death in Malaysia, acquitted, sentenced to death again, and set free in the end. While listening to the story, I want you guys to tell me if you think Maria was aware or truly oblivious to her crime. Throughout history, there have been people who have committed some of the most heinous crimes fathomable. For those crimes, they have been convicted and sentenced to death. Welcome to Death Row Executions, where we take a look into the lives of society's worst offenders. And now, your host, Air. It all started back in Australia, when a woman in her late 40s, early 50s was looking for love. Her name was Maria Elvira Pinto Exposto. Maria had adult children and was a grandmother. One day, while casually on her computer and looking for love, she met a man who called himself Captain Daniel Smith. Without ever having met each other in person, Maria was falling head over heels for Captain Daniel Smith, who said he was born and raised in America and was stationed in Afghanistan because he was a U.S. Special Forces soldier. He said he's a Daniel Smith, he's a Captain Daniel Smith. From the army, he asked me if I have any friends from the army. Daniel told Maria that he was a widower who lost his wife in an accident, and for family, all he had was his teenage son. Eventually, Captain Smith asked Maria to be his girlfriend, and after saying yes, the two were officially a couple. The two had an online relationship for two years, and we can assume Maria had no clue what a catfish was because over the course of two years, she sent Captain Daniel Smith over $18,000. Anytime he requested money, she was willing to help him out, and never seeing a face did not faze her at all. She had tried on a few occasions to video call him, but he blamed being in Kabul or other areas with bad internet connection for reasons he could not video call with her. He told me that he's in Afghanistan, Kabul, that he's working there. Maria and Daniel would talk every single day, though, on the phone, up to five times a day. And although they had been talking for years, she fell in love with him in a matter of months. Every day, four or five times a day, he even sang to me. After four months, they fell in love with each other. Maria eventually wanted to meet her soldier man in person, and Captain Smith said he would be willing to meet her in Shanghai, China, once he had time to travel. According to Maria, her boyfriend also told her that he was getting ready to retire from service in the U.S. Army and needed her help. Maria was willing to help and agreed to help the American soldier with his retirement paperwork in Shanghai, China. It was now December 2014. Maria had purchased her tickets to Shanghai. She left Sydney, Australia, and with a few layovers, she finally made it in China. She was very excited, and this is one of the many photos Maria received from Daniel. This one, of course, looks altered, but Maria was all for it. Little did she know, Captain Daniel Smith would never show up because he was not a real person. The man pictured here is not an American and is a retired British naval officer named Stephen Murphy. Unfortunately, there have been dozens of online scammers who have used his images to fool women and trick them into falling in love and trick them to send over as much money as they were willing to send. Maria was saddened that Daniel did not show up, but another man did show up and claimed to be Daniel's friend. He was American, had an American accent, and she befriended him. This friend, who could have very well been the real catfish, asked Maria if she could do him a favor and bring a couple of suitcases filled with clothes back to Australia with her. It is not clear whether this new friend communicated with her that it was Daniel's clothing and he would meet her back in Australia, but whatever the excuse was, Maria agreed to take the suitcases. Maria purchased a plane ticket back home and her first layover was in the country of Malaysia. In Malaysian airports, they make it known that getting caught smuggling could have serious consequences. At the time, anyone caught with at least 50 grams or 1.75 ounces of crystal meth is considered a trafficker in Malaysia, and death by hanging is mandatory in the case of a conviction. Maria was now ready to head to Australia from Malaysia, but customs officers noticed something green during her routine scan. 
She volunteered for them to search her two little black bags, and once one of the suitcases was opened, they noticed that the stitching in the backpack was not matching, so they tore a hole in it and found almost two and a half pounds of meth inside. Maria was immediately arrested and sent in for questioning. She claimed that she was tricked by an international drug ring and had no idea there were drugs inside of her bags. Maria was held in a Malaysian prison until her trial. A Sydney woman has been charged with drug trafficking after appearing before a Malaysian court. When her trial began, she was represented by attorney Muhammad Shafi Abdullah. He told the court that Maria was naive and, initially, when officers told her there was ice in her suitcase, she responded by saying it could not be ice because it would have melted. She had no idea that ice was a nickname for meth. He also claimed that the person who gave her the suitcase was not a friend of Captain Daniel Smith, but a stranger she became friendly with and her loving and trusting personality was taken advantage of. He also claimed that when she initially touched down in Malaysia, she went through immigration because she was unfamiliar with the airport, but she did willingly offer her bags up to be searched. It's been said that initially, lower courts believed Maria was tricked, but she was still sentenced to death. She spent a few years on death row while her attorney, Muhammad Abdullah, continued to fight for her. In December 2017, after years of appeals, Maria was acquitted by the High Court after more evidence was presented about how she was traveling to meet the love of her life, who turned out to be a scammer. Yes, because I put up my faith in my lawyers. Hey, we're going out to yeah. celebrate. The courts also took into consideration the new Malaysian law that ruled the death penalty was no longer mandatory for drug mules. Prosecutors were unhappy with her acquittal and for months, they tried to get the court to overturn the acquittal by telling the court that it did not matter if she was an unwilling participant. Being naive does not mean you are not guilty of a crime. They were quoted saying, love sickness was not a defense and ignorance is not a defense. They even got court orders to prevent Maria from returning to her home country of Australia while they were fighting to get her back on death row. Maria was stuck in Malaysia for months and finally in May of 2018, the appeal court overturned her acquittal and she was once again sentenced to death by method of hanging for drug trafficking. Malaysia's mandatory death penalty laws for drug trafficking initially came about because of lobbying from the United States and its war on drugs. America wanted to crack down on the large heroin and opium smuggling from the Golden Triangle in the 70s and 80s. The Golden Triangle is an area at the meeting point of Burma, Laos, and Thailand. In October of 2018, however, the Malaysian government imposed a moratorium on all executions until the death penalty was officially abolished, so Maria had a chance to be free again. Finally, towards the end of 2019, Maria was up in front of another appeal board. Chief Justice of Malaysia, Tenku Mamun Binti Tuan Mat, overturned Maria's convictions and ordered her immediate release from death row. Excited with the news, Maria said, I thank God and my lawyers for my freedom after almost five painful years in jail. Her son, who was outside of the courtroom to talk to reporters, said that his mother Maria missed a lot of precious moments. It will be very overwhelming for her to come back home. All I want to do is just take her home, take her away, and just catch her up on all the things she missed. Very, very, very happy. I want to hug my family because without them, I don't know how I can survive in prison. I can't want to go home. Yeah. Do you guys think that people should be spared from convictions for being naive? For example, a husband involved in shady businesses with his finances and his wife ends up going to prison as well because she had a joint bank account. Do you agree that being naive is not an excuse? Also, do you believe Maria was truly duped and had no idea she was smuggling drugs? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below.